Robert to go the president of Arc Technology Group. I think I know almost 80% of you people. Some of you have actually worked at Arc. There's Justin, Linda, John. Henry, Robert. Henry. Harry. <laughs> Henry, Harry. It's not the hair. That's the problem. It's the hair. It's gone this week, yeah. <laughs> Danny, Bill, Dennis, everyone. Um, we're going to talk about Joomla and e-commerce today. Uh, this is sort of a preview of what we'll be talking about at CMS Expo. We'll do a, a larger CMS uh, showcase about willbook.com. We'll cover some of the topics here today, and uh, we'll answer a lot of questions, so feel free to just chime in whenever you uh, have a question about what's going on or why we did something, what happened uh, here and there. A little bit about ARC. Uh, we've been around for uh, over 12 years, starting in uh, 2000. We have a long history of content management, working with uh, Fortune 50 companies down to entrepreneurs, small businesses, and uh, not for profits. Uh, Joomla focused for, for the like of Joomla. Um, as John mentioned, we've always been a sponsor of Joomla Chicago, we've been working with Mambo, and uh, prior to that, custom content management system that we've developed on our own. But always in the content management space for a very, very long time. And we've loved it, and we've had uh, great experiences. Uh, we've uh, a little bit more of the history, so I have to remember all the times. So five, six, seven times. I've lost track of how many times I've been a diamond sponsor of CMS Expo. This will be the sixth. Or Joomla Expo or whatnot. Um, sponsor of Joomla Chicago. We sponsored Joomla Camp New York this year. Uh, Joomla Day in New England. Um, what else do we have here? Uh, we work strategically with the core team, so we're always in touch with their developers and their operational staff. And we're also on the Joomla roadmap. So uh, this year, in Germany in May at JMBM will be Joomla Roadmap meeting number two. So that's the future roadmap, trying to uh, figure out what the features will be for 3.0, 3.5 going forward. So that'll be the second uh, Joomla Future Roadmap meeting coming up. I hope everyone can hear me because I hate that microphone. But Dennis says I speak better when I have the microphone on. <coughs> Not better, just loud. Um, just loud. <laughs> um, I want to touch briefly just on CCKs because it's important for example worldbook.com. I don't know why they all insist on having some kind of a uppercase uh, in them. So we have uh, Sablet, which is a CCK out of France, uh, which has done a bunch of uh, very interesting stuff over the last year. They actually have uh, a little bit of multi-site action going on for Joomla 2.5 and above. There's uh, Flexi Content, uh, Zeus CCK, and K2. So the one important thing will be K2. Yes, that's Sobe Pro. Sobe Pro is another great one. Um, Directory component. Is it a CCK? Sobe has a CCK. Well, yeah. Well, it's not technically a CCK, though. Yes. Yeah, but let's argue on the train right home. Let's argue. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this uh, is the stuff we talk uh, about on the train. Uh, Radek of, uh, of uh, Sobe would argue that it's a CCK. Uh, so that's another one out of uh, uh, Europe as well. So we have Save Blood, Sobe, Flexi Content, Zoo, K2. The, uh, the content uh, of the Joomla is slowly migrating to being uh, able to maybe create your own custom CCKs as well. Um, some of the you know, carts we're going to talk about today, there are many, many other shopping carts available for Joomla. But uh, briefly about Keep the Shop, it's a uh, Joomla 2.5 compatible shopping cart. Um, I heard someone mentioning Tienda earlier, which I think is 2.5 compatible as well these days. Um, Keep the Shop seems to be more feature complete and functional and ready going forward. And there's everyone's uh, love to hate Virtual Mart. And it's hate to hate. hate to hate, or hate to hate. It's been around uh, forever for Joomla, and has, has been de facto shopping cart, at least through 1.5. Uh, nothing else has been able to support as many features and functions as Virtual but it's been slow to catch up to 2.5, so it's been slow to 4, 1.6, 1.7, 2.5. Um, it may still actually even be in beta, as far as uh, last check, but it's been in beta for a very long time. And it's uh, missing some features that Virtual used to have in 1.5. But it's still out there, and you'll likely come across it, and it's going forward with 2.5. Our first example site is foresightonline.com. This is actually a Joomla 2.5 site using KeepKashop. And I'm going to jump into the browser just to show you sort of the front end. 
parts. So this is a company that does uh, personality assessments, corporate assessments for groups working together and how they work together. So it's sort of a Myers Briggs light on how to uh, get groups and uh, departments working together. They're a local uh, North Shore firm, and they sell content both online uh, as well as physical content like brochures. Just jump into the store. So this is all Hika shop driven. You want to know it just looks like a good old fashioned shopping cart. You can select items for your cart. So you can select uh, physical uh, products. Let's see, it's got a just thinking profile on the paper version. You can choose that. You can choose whether it's print. In this case, if everything's print, what language it's in, it, add to the cart. And from the end user perspective, it's just working like a shopping cart. You log in. Create an account, uh, purchase through um, a credit card processing firm, and that's that's the end of the day. It's pretty straightforward. We've also gone ahead and customized it uh, a lot to be able to do online assessments. So, so we can go in and create an online assessment. There's a, a package in the back end that allows you to log in, do the brand profile, see what your profile results are, and go forward. Again, so I'll just use a Kika shop in Joomla 2.5 for the whole shopping cart purchasing process. So it works, and it's on Joomla 2.5. It's easy to upgrade, and it's been upgrading. Is there user account, uh, automated user account provisioning associated with the purchase? So once you do the purchase, it sets up the user accounts for access to, to do the, uh, or go through this question. Correct, so once you create an account through the shopping okay. cart, it provisions it on the, uh, secondary application for being able to run your assessment and do your profiles. And that's a secondary application, it's not just changing the Joomla access level? Uh, to it's a completely different oh. application. It's a, a you know, PHP slash Java based slash a million other language based uh, application. Not in Joomla? Not in Joomla okay. at all. Ah, well that sort of answers my question. Is, is there, um, in terms of displaying the products, the store piece, is that done in, can it be done through articles, or is it strictly in the storefront piece? This is all in the Hika Shop piece, so all okay. the products are managed in the Hika Shop. Okay. So they'll manage SKUs, products, shipping, weights, measurements to go through UPS, or actually through their fulfillment processor, which uses FedEx and UPS. Yes, Dennis? Uh, maybe you're going to get into it, but can you say how you came up with using Hika versus VirtuMart? Well, that's an easy one, because at the time when this uh, project started, it was uh, the fall. Uh, early late fall of 2011, Virtual March just wasn't even out of, uh, maybe it was out of alpha, but it was, certainly wasn't feature complete for 2.5. And this needed to be a Joomla 2.5 site. And if you had to do them today? We wouldn't change a thing. I mean, Hika was a, a, a good choice for this project. It was uh, easy to use, simple. Um, it works at 2.5. We haven't had any problems with it. So if you had to do another one, I mean, do you have a preference, I guess, and do you know what the pros and cons are of, of each currently? There's probably a technical term, but virtual art is a pain in the ass. But that's the Is that the technical? Did I miss something in translation? Hit it on the head. It's 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 very powerful. It and it offers you know you can do all sorts of weird template templating. You can have your own virtual art plugins. There's all sorts of features and functionality. Most stores probably don't need, you know, a, a good 80% of it. It's, it's like Microsoft Word. If you're just writing a paper, you probably don't need most of the uh, features and functionality of Microsoft Word for macros and things like that. And the, the VirtuMart is really a canon uh, for taking care of a lot of problems. It, it's, it's complicated. It's a, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a beast. And we'll, we'll actually get into it because the, the World Book case study does sit on top of uh, VirtuMart. As Bill can attest to. <laughs> I should go to the virtual one store. <laughs> Lucky you. <laughs> yes, Dan. Do you consider marrying something like Magento to Joomla? Or do you stay away from that? We stay away from that because it's two completely separate platforms. There are, there are bridges between Joomla and Magento. Magento is a great platform in and of itself. But you know, you're going to have to worry about making sure that user data is 
going back and forth. You know, what are you what are you sharing between the two platforms? And then you're running two separate sites, so you have maintenance for you know Joomla and Magento. And are you experts in both? So I mean, we stay away from running two separate platforms. I know Robert's got something to say. I know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we, we, we run Magento on the one client and we hate it. So you have to be careful what you do in the Magento with its free product. But it's a quite large system, require a large database and large resources for the server. So you have to be careful with the Magento, that's the one thing. And, you know, there's plus and minus. We're always thinking with the clients like e-commerce. There's huge thing for that to having shop building on top of the Joomla. The problem is there's not one good one at this moment for the Joomla. We're running for our clients, for example, we're using separate system, just like Robert said. You have a two system. And recently, we actually find out that it's easier for them to migrate from 1.5 to 2.5 with the Joomla. Shop is still the same. So this actually is a plus for us. We don't have to migrate the whole shop. We just migrate the Joomla part to it. So there is some advantage and disadvantage. So. Well, you know, I, I, I'm on uh, extensions.joomla.org right now, and I see that there, it looks like there's a, a few more options. Red Shop. There's Red Shop. Um, there's Ace Shop. Have you guys CS tried it? Right? CS Curve? Like CS Curve. You guys have tried any of these others or taken a look at any of the We've other products? We've uh, looked at Tienda, Red Shop, or Chimart, and Shop. Okay. For 2.5, we decided to go look at the Shop for that much. Red Shop's, it's okay. I mean, just. Those are the guys who make the migration component, right? Red component. They make, yeah, anything with red in front of it is <laughs> the red shop guys. Okay. Yes? I just had a question. Uh, pardon my unfamiliarity with this, but uh, uh, is this sort of similar to purchasing a module, kind of a one time charge, or when um, you recommend this for a client, is it kind of a subscription thing where? You know, they pay based on a you know monthly fee or something. You know, for credit card processing and that kind of thing. Or is it is it's it really a, just the functionality part of it? It's a one-time purchase to get. I think every one of these components. Some of them have the subscriptions for support. So if you want updates every you know six months or a year, I don't remember which ones off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. Have those. Um, I don't know. They, they, most of them have some kind of subscription to just keep up to date. Right. Okay. Uh, credit card authorization is a separate animal, though. It's not part of it. Credit card it, authorization, it, it's not shipping and fulfillment. So if you're using some kind of e fulfillment provider, they may have their own charges as well. Uh, in the case of uh, Foresight, they go through a third party e fulfillment service so that uh, they can do international and national shipping, choose between UPS manage all their actual inventory, so they do have inventory, but it's uh, managed off-site, and our e fulfillment provider handles all of that. So we built um, custom extensions through uh, Hika Shop to be able to have all shipping done to the uh, third-party e fulfillment provider. Yes? Okay. I, I know it's probably a naive question, but I haven't done anything with, like, the shopping. So uh, I have a question about how you use third-party. Like, if you put this in your site and people are purchasing things and putting credit card numbers, is that going through into your Joomla site or is there something in this component that sends that directly to some third party that manages it? Third party. So once you get to the actual how do I get the money part, right. you'll sign up with PayPal or Authorized Latin okay. or one of those providers because you never want to carry it. Right, that's what I was saying. No, that's what I would not card, want. That credit card data anywhere. Any, anything, right, right, in the server where I'd be responsible. So there are, there are fields and administrative portions of that where you can sit there and go, okay, this is my authorized that net account. This is oh, where it okay. needs to go. Um, you can run it through uh, tests and production modes. You can actually test with fake credit cards and make sure things are failing or actually working correctly. So there's a lot of you know, testing that can be a little bit that as well. But yeah, we, in all of our case, you know, examples, none of this credit card information is sitting on a Gmail site. It's going sent out directly to the uh, credit card merchant. Uh, well, you're still responsible for it. I mean, just because you transact, if you got transaction on your website, if something goes wrong and, and you don't comply, then yeah, you're going to be responsible unless you completely push over client to the standard like PayPal. When you actually yeah. do that whole transaction, they put the credit card on someone else's website, then you don't responsible. But if you do process, probably this one actually do process on the website, you have some responsibility for it, and you can actually 
might cost you. It's a, yeah, it's a, okay. it's a, sorry, I'll get you in a mm -hmm. second. It's, a, it's, it's that catch point. So yeah, we'll have the form that says put a credit card. When you hit the post button, it goes out to authorize.net. You can screw it up, of course, and all of a sudden have data where you don't want it to be. So that, it, that liability rests with you, making sure they uh, that form to the third party provider. So you can stay out of there. I mean, Virtue Mart will even, or used to have an option to let you store credit card data on the server. You can still do that, it's legal. I mean, you can do it, but you have to know how to actually protect, protect your server sure. and the people who got access to your, to your server, too. Yeah. There's, there's, there's no good reason. I don't do it. You uh, have uh, crazy, crazy too. Yes, that's. So, my question is if you call up PCI compliance, if you call up PCI folks and read the, if you, if basically, what I sort of figured out, and, 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 open for discussion and says, I don't know if it's right. It sounds like if you go to B Sebastian, they tell you what type of cl compliance you need to based upon your transaction volume. Correct. For example, Visa has four levels. The lowest level is 20,000 tra transactions, uh, I think it's in a year. Um, it's also the, the dollar amount of the match transaction as well, so you can't get the transaction. Yeah, but anyway, it's the number of transactions. Um, and if you're that low, it's up to you whether you want to be PCI, I'll call it, if you want to have scans right on your, on, on your server. If you do want to have scans done on your server, it's my understanding that um, you usually cannot exist in a shared environment. The only shared environment I could find was Bluehost, and they do allow you to scan. Um, so I guess my question is, PCI compliance, um, you know, you have a favorite host, you um, think that is an issue that you do comply or you don't think it's an issue and how do you handle PCI compliance? As long as the... And there's a follow up, what is PCI compliance? I forget what it stands for. <laughs> it's it's. Yeah. It's, it's a payment card industry. Yeah, it's some, some group standards. of people who just want to make sure that your data is secure. Uh, we're happy if the merchant is, uh, the credit card uh, merchant is PCI compliant. At our end, it just doesn't matter. I mean, the customers don't care. No one looks for PCI compliance. They Payment look, card industry. Thank you. People look for the SSL, you know, lock or icon, and that they're happy with that. No one looks for PCI So you're saying compliance. even though um, you're um, on static IP? Yeah. SS, SSL? Yep. And you're entering it on your domain. Yeah. Um, that that domain does not need to be PCI compliant. Not in our book. Well, PCI it, compliance it, covers so many other things yeah, that are yeah. kind of irrelevant towards whether the data is encrypted. Sure, that's one of the factors. Oh, yes, it needs to be encrypted. There's a long list. Absolutely. There's a long list, and a lot of it is is. Well, the big part is DSS, the data uh, security scans that they require, and. Depending upon what level of transactions, you can either opt out of them, say I don't want them, or you're mandated to do them and have them done quarterly and be independently audited on it. You know, that's if you're a huge company, right? So I guess I wanted to, I guess, to, you know, put this out in the open. That's my understanding that you need to have uh, some type of compliance on your environment, even if you're handing off to authorize.net. Is that, that's my understanding. You don't need it at all. PCI compliance is, you know, that's, that's sort of like the business, Better Business Bureau uh, blog or uh, badge. We haven't found that uh, problem with any of our clients who, you know, want to do e-commerce. Well, yeah. sir, sir, you sir, might get that from certain, you know, auditing providers depending on, you know, what kind of business you're doing. So maybe someone's account will say it's PCI compliance. The size of the business. All the way through. Well, but, let's say 20,000 transactions a year or less. That's, that's level four. If you go to Visa's website for PCI compliance, that's their lowest level. But Visa will still take your card and money. <laughs> <laughs> but they do say that you need to do the DSS part of the PCI, which is the data security scans, and that's the part that costs money if you're in a shared hosting environment. But they also put this on the, on your, on the if you use the PayPal, they put this on the PayPal. The PayPal actually can do this kind That's of only if you hand off to them. PayPal is set is different than authorized.net. So let's well, talk about authorized. Yeah, pay, 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 that's if you jump you. completely to the PayPal site. I, yeah, but they I would say never, ever, never, ever yeah. go on a shared environment, first mm -hmm. of all. 
and second, always hand off you know, as much as you can to a PCI compliant. Well, when you hand off, there's two methods. There's a seamless and then there's the seamed, right? So the seamed is where you actually change domains and your customer says, I don't want that to happen. Yeah. Oh, I could put your logo up there. Oh, I want the full site. I want it to be seamless. Yeah, so they don't realize that look and feel decision already just, in my opinion, mandated that they're in a PCI compliant environment, which means rather than paying $12.95 a month, they're paying $150 a month for their hosted provider. There's also the option to just pass those costs along to the client. Too. Yeah. You know, I've had, I have a wetlands initiative right down the street here. I did a big donation form for them. And you know, part of the, uh, you know, they're, they're handling their own hosting. They're handling their own uh, credit card transaction account and so that I don't face any overhead or management responsibilities. But I know they had to go through a bunch of rigmarole roll for this very basic P PCI compliance where they got a packet of information that said, you know, you need to have the following access controls for your staff and you know the, the following security procedures and a whole bunch of managerial stuff that wasn't related to technology at all. Now I've never I've never heard of any anybody being audited for this or at least on small websites. I mean I can't uh, again I mean it's a it's a fairly new it's really only been pushed out this last what two years maybe three years and it's yeah. kind of yeah. kind of they're going from the top down. And it's not a legal requirement. It's not even a technical requirement half the time. Isn't it for like healthcare systems, uh, the legal system? It's just, no, it's the credit card companies in general. They just want to be able to push because, security. Because I mean, if you don't hand it off, you're liable for each in uh, fraction that you'll be charged like 10 grand for but every credit cheaper. card number that gets stolen. Not so why wouldn't you hand it off? You know? but, that's you, but you could still not be PCI compliant even if you're handing off. That's what if you thing. encrypt your data, your, you have your SSL? But that's the thing, they have a list of other things like you so know, who has thing. access at the administrator level, who's got to, you know, if you're a yeah. site yeah. slash administrator, uh -huh. you know, how many people actually have access to change users' passwords? Who gave the intern FTP access the so they could upload some crap to Where's the backup? Yeah, you, know, right you right have the local and offsite. Right, right. If you, if you have to encrypt your terminal, backup, then. If you collect, right. if you collect Credit card information over the phone. They want to know is your is it an IP phone or is it an analog? Yeah. Phone? There's a lots of other stuff. But I'm sort of narrowing in just on my piece of the pie, the DSS. Well, do you guys charge extra for that then? If you got to manage all this extra stuff, or is this just rolled in the project? Yeah. Let's just, let's just do it. This is what the project is. We'll, you know, we hand off to authorized on that. Or we charge by the hour. So yeah. Right. <laughs> right. I mean, at the end of the day, yes. You know. But but yeah. Okay. So you're at an so, hourly get hourly contract. But, so I mean, the project is scoped you know, on an hourly basis, so if they need to do something extra, that's already scoped. Okay. The, re, regarding PCI, is there any requirements uh, if you're handing it off, like what you said you did? Yes. There's okay. a whole, I mean, there's... No, I mean, it, for you to run your e-commerce site, should you be concerned about PCI requirements? If you're handing it off to uh, PayPal and Google Checkout, and you don't store credit card numbers? I mean, I'm, I'm getting... I, I know what my answer is. I'm curious what Dennis's answer is. <laughs> My answer is you need to do the DSS, data security scans. Mm -hmm. And that's a piece that costs the money if you're in ship if you're if you, know, you have a dedicated server, you would need that though. That's correct. Okay. But a dedicated server costs money. So even though you're as long as your um their your the keystrokes, if you look up or your domain, even though you hand it off to them, authorized.net, those keystrokes on your domain mean that you do that it's highly recommended that you uh, adhere to the DSS, data security skills. That's my understanding. And what is that? Is that just basically run a PHP process through all the PHP files and look for? Uh, no, no, there's, there's, a, there's a AVS, uh, an approved vendor. Um, oh. Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Give, like, pay up, buddy. Uh -huh. It's $200 time. a year for an IP. And they'll do quarterly scans and don't adhere to them, it's up to your hosting provider to fix it. And there's no open option for doing your own scanning or um, not unless if you're a ABS. I, you know, I gotta tell you, or ASB, yes. maybe maybe it's just the entrepreneur in me, but I think you're going, I think it's extreme. I think you're in an extreme situation. I think that if you set yourself up and you make sure that you have PCI compliant uh, processor, you handle the client, you know, you handle the user and hand it off. I, I think it's worth investigating and it's not that I, I just have not, you know, from this standpoint, I, I haven't heard this uh, recommendation. And and I guess getting to the bottom of it would be really important. 
uh, for me uh, if, I, if I'm going to be doing that kind of uh, work on the e-commerce side. But I think, uh, to me, I think it's it's news to me. I, I totally agree that from a PCI compliance standpoint, I would never do press. I used to do pressing on our own shared server 10, 15 years ago. Well, that explains but, yeah, that, that that purchase purchase on my credit card. That's before we knew purchase. you. You don't, we have credit cards, you don't even know you own. <laughs> uh, no, but anyway, uh, so that's news to me that I'll have to look into. Uh, it just seems to me off of the street. What do you do for PCI compliance? Because yeah, now I'm make, worried just, about what he's saying. We just make sure our merchant is PCI <laughs> compliant. Okay. Because yeah. they hold the data. Right, Especially right. for, you know, sort of the recurring processing stuff, um, subscription and things. That's important that they can do that. But we're handing off data. We're, you know, we're SSL from you know, we'll start to finish on that. So Okay, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm exactly doing it the same way you're doing it, so I'm, I'm okay. I'm yeah, but you cannot use this in card. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You cannot use this in card. I cannot use what? Well, so I, I mean, just said you use the same way what he's doing. Doesn't mean he's right. I'm just. <laughs> well, I, I passed it by my lawyer and everything. He said, you know. Okay. Well, include the limitation. Well, of Robert, is, he, is, your, I, I is your point is your point that actually the credit card? His point, I think, I understand this is the credit card pushing this law. Is that a law? Mm -hmm. That's right. the, that's the first thing. Is, is, is a credit card requirement. So I think but well, they, they actually got pretty much strong power. They can actually take take the credit card from you and say, hey, you didn't comply. It's not a law, but you still didn't comply. You can take it away. So it's, well, it's this is the law, EFI area. But there's a law and then there's a risk. Let me, let yeah. me just give a little closure to this, maybe, <laughs> because it's an open issue. It's something it we could talk for a week on and never get the answer. Has, has anybody in here used uh, Braintree as a processor? A long time. They happen to be here in Chicago. They're awesome as a uh, as a processor, but they uh, go I really to hope they're a sponsor. See my sex though. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. We got a shirt. We got a shirt. Sure. Uh, BraintreePayments.com. Check them out. You'll love their site. They, it happens to be a Ruby shop. They're big into uh, you know 37 signals and those guys. But it says uh, brilliantly simple PCI compliance. Definitely read through this. I'll just read a paragraph. I won't tie up a lot of your time. Braintree's transparent redirect client-side encryption and mobile libraries enable you to build your own payment forms that, that send sensitive data directly to our servers. You can, now this is marketing speak, I realize, but you control the user experience completely since your users never leave your site, but you avoid most, most, most PCI compliance concerns because the credit card data skips your servers. Most. There's most always is the key word. They got to protect yeah. their asses. They got good lawyers too. Well, no, because at some point they're not following PCI compliance yeah. because they still can't guarantee that your they're, site is 100% yeah. PCI compliant. That's the process. You know, it's twofold. Your site has to follow all the rules and regulations for PCI compliance, and the credit card processor has to follow, you know, steps for PCI compliance. So when both those match up, then you're, you know, PCI compliant end to end. We found that. You know, 99 times out of a thousand, a hundred, excuse me, um, as long as out of a thousand, that's just a factor of like way too many. <laughs> thousand, hundred, uh, as, as long as the credit card processor is PCI compliant, that's, that's you know, what you need to worry about today. You know, depends what Visa says tomorrow. Yes. Okay, is it possible to do this, and people might laugh at me, but is it possible to do something with these like components like a component like Hikashop, whatever it is, Hikashop, and have like use the interface, but instead of having it take a credit card, have it do something kind of retro like <laughs> produce a nice like PDF form that a person could send a check in with. I mean, is it possible to use like the interface that looks like a store and go produce? Or send like, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I know. But you, you laugh, but that may be what you know. I have like the only website I have really, because I don't even have time to do that one right. Is is like a church website, and they're so paranoid about it. That's all they will ever let us do. They won't even let us do like a link to a PayPal or a but PayPal will take e checks. Correct. Right? Yeah. You know. Right, but do you see what I'm saying? Like, so that's actually one of the reasons 
that it's, I don't have a store on my site. You should just use PayPal. Yeah, you should PayPal as outside. But they won't let me do that. They okay. don't want to do anything that you has do, no, even right connected. Now. But they'll let you. Met, they'll want. They want it to look like a store, and they want to email the PDF. And yeah, yeah, they, and have like card something card. Okay. some person yeah. print yeah. out yeah. 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 with an old-fashioned yeah. check. Email That's the, the PDF with the credit card. No, 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 no credit card. The check. Mail mail. Mail check, as in check, as in like, personal I'll go home check. Later and mail a check. Yes, yes. No. exactly. That's uh, what the only thing that they want that well, they will let us use for payment. Do you understand? Convince them to use PayPal, some type of shopping component. Or well, that's what or but there's there's there's, there's no way to take shop. these like <laughs> shopping interfaces and have that be the end. There's a number of itself. donation components which yeah. give you the option. You can either do it by credit card or you can you know pay later by check. And there, yeah. that, that might be a feature. That's what I was <laughs> saying. Can you do you it know, so there's no you can credit card option? Shop and and just to create you know a basket of goodies. Now I'm trying to think. And then have like pay later by check, and it produces something that looks like a nice printable form, or just it could be an HTML page that they could print. Robert could do that for you <laughs> <laughs> this weekend. Robert Novak. <laughs> yeah. But do you see what I'm saying? You know, yes. is that an option in there? So just auto-generate an invoice that they would pay a check to. Like, yeah. So if it's it all had, the items in your basket. But does it have that without the other? Like I looked at some of these things and it was like there was like you could do it with an option pay by check, but it wasn't very easy for me to figure out how to get all the other stuff out. If you know what I'm saying, so that you can probably do that. We've never done that. <laughs> Usually, most people when they start building e-commerce like want the money right away. Yeah. Yeah. They don't want the check. They don't want the check. Usually, it's a drop off rate on mailing a check. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know, but that's. I mean, Amazon says you know it's more than one click and their drop off rate goes through the roof. Yeah. What happens when you got to mail a check? And you besides know, a that, if you take somebody's check, you have to hold it for 21 days because if that check bounces, it, it could say that it, ca you know, the bank cashed a check and it's okay, but if it's before 21 days, that check, could, you know, go back and your bank will be like, well, guess what? They didn't have the funds, and we thought it, you, you know. But this is church. I was gonna say, yeah. you guys are playing in a church. Program. Sorry, well, she's never gonna get anywhere. <laughs> Just so take care. Yes, you can have a church website yeah. too. Yeah. Yes, so it's not going to happen. The point is, I guess. Okay, so the question is, the question is very simple. My question is, let's say I had this component, can I? Could it's I modify not going to be easy. Could no, I you modify can, well, it to do you should be, that? You because should be able sometimes to do you have to do what the client wants, regardless of all these very sensible arguments that you I. You should be able to do it with almost any any one of them. Not, I don't not say some of them are going to be easier than other. But it should be doable. All yeah. you have to do is just use the check instead of the credit card. Usually, yeah. the, the, there's a, a number of different payment <laughs> plugins. So, like, yeah. usually, uh, a lot of times I've seen like a payment payment plugin page for that component, and it'll say, "All right, do you want to use twocheck.com? Do you want to use PayPal? Do you want to use authorized.net? Uh, maybe there's also a, a pay by check one. And then, just like other Joomla elements, you know, you can publish or unpublish yeah. different aspects. And so, you know. Check with the developer, and there may be like a, an option for that. Um, I've seen that. Is that the case with EcoShop, where you can kind of yeah. do a little control panel and turn things on and off and decide which methods you want to support? Are you checking on that right now, Dennis? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I found some good one. I got a question for you. Uh, other than you know, passing the collection plate, I don't know if that's PCI compliant anymore. <laughs> but uh, how about history? When you you know, in terms of EcoShop. Um, does it keep history of a client? Yeah. So you can so look keep the back. transaction history of. of okay. So I can go back in as the customer and look at my history as yep. well. Okay. When it, with Hikoshop, is the user also like a user on your Joomla? Yes, they are. Site. So they're so a registered they have a user on the Joomla shop. So okay. So they're on go the Joomla site. So you have to make sure that if you have things that are registered versus unregistered. They anything that would correct. be registered for users would automatically be accessible to everybody who signed up as a user through the shopping. Yes, that's exactly it. It's the I mean, that's some of the benefit because a lot of times you're, you're doing so setting up. Be a pro or con. You're setting up, you know, yeah, payments you so that people can actually access specific content on the site. Yeah. And so that's how it works. Does he handle digital downloads? Uh, yes. Actually, it does because these uh, PDFs are sold through. So, yes, okay. I think I just said it does actually have a digital download. Did you have 
presentation that we just hijacked. It's just all Q&A. It's, it's, it's become all Q&A. Do you have, some, do you have a question? <laughs> totally hijacked. End user group. <laughs> it's the Bill Stafford show. He's quiet. He's <laughs> Um, this is actually a Virtumark site, we've almost forgotten about them. <laughs> a little rap. Dennis knows this one. And uh, so let's just jump over there. And again, you know, we'll look at just the, uh, the user experience portion of it. That's going to be your standard shop. Again, you wouldn't know whether this was Virtumark or Hika Shop, or whatever. You can see the product, you can choose quantities, add it to your cart, log in, very standard stuff. So there are a lot of ways to customize all these shopping carts as well. And so these icons might give it away as a, as a virtual mark shop, give it a giant disc. What's a disc? And the, the delete button. <laughs> I think that's funny. <laughs> uh, pretty much all of these uh, components have VC framework at this point. Uh, Hika Shop definitely is. I assume, uh, we haven't played with Virtual Mart on 2.5 yet, but I would assume they're following the MC framework for that. Um, and it seems like a lot of them also have their own templating sub engines for specific catalog pages. Correct. So Virtual Mart has a bunch of its own templates. You can template all portions of, uh, of their components and go through their pages. It can get very, very complex. Which is good and bad. I mean, you can do a lot of cool stuff. So, if you have the wherewithal, technical expertise, and patience, you, you can uh, push through it and get a, a, a fantastic looking site without, you know, without knowing that it's actually just a standard Virtue Mart install. Um, same with the shop. I have a question. Um, in Virtue Mart, you were able to do multiple coupon codes. In Hika Shop, I haven't been able to do that. Is there a hack or, or a fix or something that so you found? Multiple simultaneous uh, coupon, coupon codes. codes, yeah. Um, create a third coupon code that has two of them combined. But I have, but if you have like different uh, products, you know, I, I don't think it would work. If you have, like, oh, so you have one coupon for your bike and another coupon for the bracket or the phone. Okay. Yeah. But how, how do you get the, you know, the multiple? I don't know off the top of my head right now. I have to look at that. Most places you can only use, you know, a specific coupon for Per item. No, at Virtual Mart you can use two. But you would have to create a different coupon for every item. Right, right. Yeah. But you, in for Virtual Mart you would add like say, I don't know, free ship and then a uh, comma and then another uh, say uh, Christmas. Well, and so you're saying two different like benefits of the coupon promotions. For, uh, right, for two promotions. promotions. But in Hika Shop, I have I've not been able to do that I think yet. Only, yeah, I think Hika only does one promotion. Per okay. Because I've been researching and, and I'm like I don't I can't find the option to do that or the hack. I know they just had an so, uh, update. I think just a week ago. Yeah, I, I did the update. Okay, so I have that. So there, here's I a question related to that because what would it cost to hire a developer to, to build a hack for you on something like that? I don't want to hack. It. Don't say it. Don't say it depends either. A plugin. Plug I mean, a plug yeah, a plugin. I mean, a, plug a lot of times, you know. <laughs> I, I'll search for four, five, six hours and get frustrated. Somebody says, John, it's like 400 bucks if you want to hire somebody to just do it for you. A coupon plugin for that is probably about $500,000, yeah. I guess. Something to think about if, I mean, it's your business. Right. You know, it's a lot of people's business. Or change the shopping cart. Or change the shopping cart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Ooh. Do you really want to use Virtual Mart? <laughs> yeah. I wanted to ask uh, both you and also if anyone else has experienced this in uh, some of the other marketing tools which are built into these products, for example, similar items, other users who shop at the, look at this, also look at this, you know, all of those things, uh, upselling, cross-selling, uh, that results in more revenue. And usually that's very, you know, much more sophisticated consumer-facing type stuff. Um, you encounter that with any of your clients? Has anybody else done these? We find our clients, and we've come across a, a number of times, they like to manage that, uh, you know, totally micromanage it. So they actually like to go in and select which products are, you know, tied to, which are the upsells. Oh, so they're doing the... They're actually going to, they're doing the thinking. They're not going to let them sit there and say, well, let's see who bought what. They actually have uh, specific marketing plans and sales plans for, well, a lot of people are going to look at the rippy-jippy uh, 
you know. Riffy Jiffy. Riffy Jiffy. It's a tech. It's, that's a technical term too. It's over my head. I mean, <laughs> Riffy Jiffy. The Riffy. Tell myself, break, <laughs> break it down. <laughs> the really cheap, crappy item. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> the lost leader. The, the lost leader. Riffy Jiffy. Yes. Lost leader. Riffy Jiffy. Oh. Um, we're gonna look cool. at the Riffy Jiffy item, and. Yeah, they're going to want to micromanage what are the up upsells on those products. So they'll set up two, three, four products on that that uh, are related or upsells. So generally they want related items, not so much people who bought this bought other things. Yeah. Or, or similar types of tools that help uh, you know, push other products or, or upsell. For example, we know Justin's cheap, so he's always going to buy Rippy Chippy. And he may also buy the other Rippy Chippy items. So he can buy Rippy Chippy 1 and Rippy Chippy 2. But, you know, as the owner of the firm, I don't want every Justin coming in and buying the other you know, cheap product, I want to say, well, they may have bought Ruby Jimmy One, but now let's sell it to Ruby Jimmy One. You're always going to end up with a funny result on that. I'm sorry? Doing, you know, people who bought this also bought yeah. that. Yeah. You're always going to get the weird. Yeah. 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 So no one else has experienced it. So we have not. We've never done that on an automated basis. Uh, all yeah. of our clients have, have wanted to do it manually. And were your clients able to go in and use the Joomla interface to set up these relationships themselves? Or yep. Oh, they did. Okay. Right. Impressive. Do the training. Um, some that's not that. So Ecoshop is pretty approachable for. The well, in, in, the, in uh, especially in the case of uh, when we get to world, if we ever get to world book before time runs out. What do you have to want? Uh, they were setting up uh, related items with K2. Oh, okay. Um, so that's that's LRAP. Uh, and now let's jump to worldbook.com. So some of you may have heard of uh, world, some of you may have heard of worldbook.com. They made some kind of print product. <laughs> I've heard of. It comes in very thick, heavy volumes of paper. Uh, they also sell CDs and subscriptions online for their Worldbook Online product. This is a Virtual Mart site, and it is uh, unique uh, for us in that it is integrated with K2, a CCK, that's why we brought those up earlier. We use a tool, tool called K2 Mart to push all of the uh, uh, Virtual Mart requests through the K2 or All the K2 content winds up in virtual, I should say. So when we go in and start looking at items, uh, if you look at the, well, that's the iPad, that's probably the wrong thing to look at. Let's look at Encyclopedia. So all of these categories and lists of products are uh, driven by what's in K2. So we can look at the advanced research package. The uh, reason for using K2 was the uh, sheer amount of different types of content fields for the product, so it's not just a product title and product description and image. Uh, we want to separate out the price, the sale price, uh, the SKUs, you know, a whole bunch of details that we see on the side here. That could be sorted by, searched by, uh, and made relevant to uh, both people on the back end and the front. We have things like product images, product videos, key features. These are all fields that are uh, managed in K2 instead of having to go through articles and what was offered by Virtual Mart, which was slightly limited to all the data that they had at worldbook.com. Are we looking at the K2 page or a Virtual Mart page? Here? It's uh, uh, um, yes. Um, virtual Mart. <laughs> yes, it's a K2 Virtual Mart page. <laughs> oh, well, what if, What's inside Joomla. Inside Joomla. <laughs> like if it, it wasn't a search in front of the URL, would it be com virtual uh, mart or com page? This I, um, this is a com virtual mart page. I'll go with it. You'll go with it. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, who who dabbled uh, on some of this, uh, knows very well. But yes, yeah, so probably a virtual mart page that's dragging content out of K two, and uh, we can actually go back. In and take a look at all the K2 data and content to see exactly how it's working. So we have the advanced research package. So 
a Joomla 1.5 on this too. This is, yes. Uh, this was done, uh, this was started way before sure, 1.5 sure. was. You guys migrating yet or? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just keep it going slowly, but we can see, you know, all the K2 mark functionality from product price, product status, all sorts of attributes, dimensions, uh, weight. So this is a nice 93 pounds of weight that has to go through fulfillment from the giant encyclopedia set. Different types of images. So it offered us a lot more functionality on what we could insert and use on the pages. So we have a bunch of description fields. So again, it allowed the administrators to easily manage the content. Um, in this case, it's just a video drop in. We have uh, some screen pages where we just have complementary fields of images. All the that, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> uh, the inside look menu items that are used for the product. There's many more other fields that we could be using. Yes, Dennis. So does that, since it's K2 mark, mark, does it come with, say, a list of fields that they think that you probably will want, or, and then you can add to them? You would add them all through K2. You add them all through K2. So K2 this, becomes the data repository for VirtuMark. So K2 mark is the bridge between VirtuMark and K2. Yeah, but it doesn't come with any pre-populated no. fields. It's going to use whatever is pre-populated K2, so you don't have. You know, well, that's what I'm saying. So basically, you have to build all your your builds yourself, or it comes with some list of standard generic builds. You build it yourself in K2, and actually, there's an initial K2 import. K2. There's an import from VirtuMark that'll bring in all. If you have any products already in VirtuMark, it'll create the first set of K2 fields. So you first create that out. So you'll have the title, price, and whatever. But already, if you create a product for that. Otherwise, so you're managing it all through K2. Yeah. So there's an order of operation. You're setting this up from scratch. You want to set up conversion mark first and then K2. If you're setting it up from scratch, you want to set up K2 first. Because then you don't have any cruft from virtual mark. You have a clean install with K2 pushing all the data through virtual mark. In our case, we actually went it was a virtual mark. existing store, and we're going to add stuff on, so then you're going to import from the existing store. Yeah, but in a perfect world, you start from K2, because that's going to be your ultimate data repository for all the products. But you can have you know, an immense amount of fields and then customize the templates and functionality going forward from there. How's control over the uh, checkout workflow? I know it's kind of limited, or my experience was kind of limited. It's still through virtual mark. So the check. Okay. All the shopping cart stuff is still handed through VirtuMark. Sure. The data is all handed through K2. Right, and in, in, in the case of VirtuMark, my experience has been that the, the checkout workflow is kind of rigid, or well, I think there might, might be some hacks to streamline it uh, and make it a faster checkout process, but is, that, is there a, a customizable workflow for checkout in HikaShop? Well, oh, HikaShop. Um, Because you know, I, I, I think I remember in, in VirtuMart, it's like, you know, it gives you the stupid little shopping cart icon, the terrible piece of artwork by developer, you know, one, two, three, or it's like four or five screens, or can't be that many to click through in order just to check out. But a lot of times, it's a desire to really streamline it, make it, you know, fill out everything on one page and then click go. Um, did you guys customize the checkout process for VirtuMart? In this case, yeah, it's customized because we have to handle possible uh, handoffs, like Foresight with HikaShop, to their World Book Online system. Oh, okay. So people might be purchasing uh, a, a subscription to World Book Online, they might be purchasing a product, so inside the PA that weighs 96 pounds, or they may be purchasing both, so we'd be able to manage all that. So we actually have custom plugins that handle uh, that kind of transaction. And how, what, uh, what are those plugins you know, they it's offering? Is it updating a record in the uh, yeah, there's some, so, that's, there's some soap going back okay. and forth between the book online and then uh, data being sent to their uh, fulfillment. So they have fulfillment from a third party a publisher that does a lot of the shipping. And then, uh, again, additional data being sent to their accounting. When, when you costed those things out for the project, do you have to kind of look at every system that they wanted to talk to and then break it down? Oh, no, we usually find out about these way too late. Probably. Okay, way too late. So you just turn it up up front to cover your ass. You just kind of hope. Okay. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so that's, that's sort of the, you know, the big thing about Workbook is actually integrating K2 with VirtualBird. Uh, 
Would we have done this the same way going uh, forward in the future? Maybe, you know, the, 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 there's a lot of content they have. Some of them have I think too, when I, when I talked to you about why you did it for the virtue mark, I thought one of the great things you said back to me was because they were already trained in virtue mark and they had big enough staff, already trained, they're not going to be trained into something else. It was easier work with what they had in training than trying to be trained that big of a group. So yeah. I thought that was very important and I wouldn't have thought about that going forward. They were very comfortable with it. Their systems that kind of integrated it all levels you know get added the content um, so they're very comfortable with virtual those are a brand new company i don't know if i'd start them off with virtual it's just a little more complicated i think it needs to be but the flexibility of adding k2 to it was <coughs> fantastic we were able to add a lot of content and data um, well, another reason that's very important is because there are actually sort of two sites in one so what we're sitting at right now is the consumer uh, facing site we also have the world book for school and library which looks surprisingly the same but a lot of the content uh, switches out between the two. So we have the same templates, but uh, using K2 Mark, we have items that are flagged either for consumer only or for institutional use. So pricing, that's changes. pricing changes, sales change, um, whether they even exist changes. So uh, there's that was another reason for using uh, a CCK that can handle that kind of content. That, that's all the same it's, instance of Joomla. It's the same as Joomla. Same URL? Same, same everything. It's, uh, there's a cookie that's marked out and saying that you are an institutional user. But the, the, the product database is the exact same. You just have fields for whether if you're an institutional user and you uh, decide to go on the institution side, whether or not that product will actually show what the price is. Their goal is to be able to do that across multiple different industries. So right now there's school, um, library, there's consumer, and they'll have other ones going forward. It also allows us to handle international orders separately, so there's uh, certain Canadian pricing and shipping differences versus other international shipping differences. So if you're ordering from uh, Europe or Australia, you actually don't see any pricing at all. You just know that the product exists, and you're told to go to your local retailer because <laughs> they don't like shipping overseas, you know, 100 you know, pound books. Yes. What's the number of uh, concurrent users you've got buying stuff on this thing, or like how did you plan for that? 400,000. No, I, <laughs> I could not tell you what uh, the okay. current, uh, it's current surprisingly low. <laughs> well, There's not a lot for of 96 people. pounds of books, are you sure? Well, because it seemed like it's <laughs> rounder. <laughs> it's, 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 not, it's not in the, you know, tens of thousands of visits per month. I actually took a look. And you knew that going into it, so you knew that you knew the you know, have to that it was a huge concern. They right. knew that going into it. Right. So you didn't really have to worry about that. Because you think that for, for these e-commerce processes... Google.org gets more hits per month than Worldbook.com. Sure. Sure. Well, so Worldbook.org just... gets more hits than almost any site. Yeah. Well, except for <laughs> RTG.com. Except for that, yeah. <laughs> um, but Robert, uh, you had mentioned the need for some real oomph behind those Magento sites. I mean, I'm, I'm wondering if that is just a function of Magento or, you know, it, I suppose if you're going to do serious e-commerce, you need to invest in the server, uh, at least a managed... Uh, or BBS server, um, much less a dedicated server. Oh, they have dedicated to, servers for a whole world, yeah, yeah. so that's that's not a problem. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the least. Of so I imagine you reach a threshold in terms of like you know your e-commerce business. It seems like this is you know their primary business is all online, but then you've got like your church, you know that, that does a bunch of other stuff, and then you've got the actually the primary stuff. business is not online. Oh, yeah. um, most of it is you know coming through. Oh, Sorry. They have a lot of, their business is most institutional, so they have uh, a sales force that goes out institutional. They're trying to grow the online presence. That's the, that's the difference. They're coming <coughs> late to the game, but they understand that they need to be able to have at least an online uh, but if, but if somebody came, if somebody say, came to you and said, I want to do some online e-commerce, your answer for hosting would be, you need at least a VPS or a, a virtual server. Certainly. Well, yeah. again, it depends what they're buying. You know, right. Start at a VPS because you can always scale up. But that's the lowest you'd go, right? I mean, you wouldn't uh, you wouldn't put e-commerce on any sort of shared hosting environment. Yeah, you know, we'd really like not to. Yeah. I mean, some clients will say, I don't want to pay more than $10 a month. You know, like, 
Okay. Not my client anymore. Well, it's a, it's a, it's it's not the. I think that's the wrong place to put a dollar priority. Right. Whether it's spending ten or fifty dollars a month, I think is the wrong place. But well, even if the client tells you too that it's not their main issue, the moment that server goes down and it goes down more often in a share environment than not, they're going to be complaining because now they're losing sales. Where before, you know, the loss of knowledge for an hour really isn't calculable. Nobody ever says, "Oh, I didn't know what I wanted to know for a whole hour," you know. But they will call you and say, oh, they can't donate for three hours. What are we going to do? We don't get $10 for our fish fry. They're going to be more upset about that. <laughs> but even though that's what they chose. And, and I think the security, the, the hacking, the, the security issues are shared. I've been scared. Yes. I'm going to get a question in here before you get cut off. <laughs> um, for either one of these shopping carts, the Virtue Mart and Hika Mart, is there, has any, have you seen anybody build a one page checkout for either one of these? One or is one, yeah, you know, one page, rather than a four page checkout, have you ever seen without anybody? A login? Without a log with or without a login, doesn't matter. Are we allowed to with Amazon's patents? Can well, we no, I, what I'm saying is a, a lot of the other non Joomla commercial sites, one page checkouts are big. I mean, they, I mean, every company wants a one-page checkout. They don't want this multiple-page stuff. Because it results in more sales. Uh, it, oh, absolutely. They, they lose a lot of sales on these multi-page checkouts. Uh, and I, I guess my question was, is, have you seen anybody try to do that with Joomla? I don't believe we've ever done a one-page checkout. There, there are technical reasons why it is very difficult to do. Oh, it is, yeah. You know, because you've got to get you've got to get information, so you've got to get logged in somehow, and you've got to create the Joomla user. No, you don't. You could just there's there are products there that will process the transaction without needing to uh, uh, set up a Joomla user for, for I mean, Virtual Mart. I know there's the option it's to edge create edge. a user account, but you can also turn that off entirely, right? It's edge where so you it's could multiple pages for the server. So that's what a user. No, you can do it. I think the Virtual Mart, actually, the new Virtual Mart can do it with the one page. Right, if you don't need to set up a, a, a Joomla user or, you know, uh, confirm by email or anything like that, it should be just, you know, name, address, credit card information, a list of your products, and the big buy button at the bottom. And that's what, that's a sta that seems like the e-commerce standard. Back to the PCI compliant issue, though, if everything's on one page, obviously you're not passing it off to somebody. No, no, no. You well, can do it with the edges. That's, that's sort of like multiple pages, you just don't see it. Oh. You think you click and change, but actually what's happened is one page gets sent, another page gets pulled in dynamically when you're still on the same page. Are there any components that do that right now, or is that something? I think the Vitrumark, the Vitrumark can do it. I don't know, we don't use the Vitrumark, but I, we talked to the Nick and he said, yeah, the Vitrumark can do it. Because well, you know, at, at a minimum, what you want is, is that a one, a, on one page, you have all of the, the registration information, client, address and all that, when you hit submit there, you could go to authorize say net or wherever and do the credit card processing. But the object is you only want one page on the Joomla site. And once you leave the Joomla site, then you've got a, you know, you're, now you're at the mercy of PayPal or whatever else to, to collect the money. But you really only want, if, if you want a lot of business, you want one page, you don't want to have a whole bunch of pages asking you a million questions. Your clicks the better. <laughs> That right. Be a problem. Yep. Except you got market something that's complaining about it. Well, that's catch one. You. you don't necessarily want them to just give you a credit card right away. If you can also get their email address, yeah, home address, and phone number, you know, mother's maiden name, <laughs> social security number, the whole nine yards. I would say also just that we registration event registration pro. It's now one page. I think it could be. I'm gonna see if Robert can beat that challenge. But uh, uh, no, that registration pro, you don't need to be a user. You just sign up, you put all your information in there. It's just a form fill. And frankly, that's how a lot of people could end up just doing e-commerce. It's just get, it, and that's all K2 is, is I mean, and the CCK, it's just a form fill. So if you think of something like RS Forms, and then put a PayPal yep. on there, if you're looking to do something simple, <coughs> I mean, we can talk about all these other very detailed approaches, but if you want to keep it simple, Get something like RS forms with a, which is not programmer intensive, and if you need a little help, that's what Skype's for. But uh, 
it uh, seems like breezing forms or RS forms, and I think it's 39 bucks. And get a uh, the PayPal plugin, which I think is free, it comes with it. And then make sure that the, uh, and what's nice about PayPal is that they're your credit card processor too. And it's, uh, you'll save yourself a lot of trouble. Um, anyway, that's what we do with Event Registration Pro, which is for but registration that purposes. But only works if you don't have a whole slew of products that you're trying to right. cards and that kind of stuff. You can only have, you know, they can only select so many things and then it's paid as a bundle. And know? then the other But there are coupons built into it, so it's doable. Yeah, yeah, there's some couponing of it. So for simple also, I just also showed you uh, iJumla uh, Digistore, really good for digital downloads and good for, uh, it's not good for any of this stuff, but for real simple, uh, and Maria, who runs that company, will tell you exactly what it's not good for. <laughs> That's what I love about Maria. Uh, and she'll say, go away, go get this. This is not going to work here on a, a Digistore. But for under 200 bucks, you'll be in with a pretty decent solution with Digistore if you're selling digital products or donations. It's great for that. If there's any product involved, actual shipping and taxes and stuff, forget that. I've been using a, a component called JDonations uh, ah. for a couple of not for profits. It seems like there's a bunch of components yeah. for like these one off types of things like donations. Or, or events like so the events. Event Pro. We also are mm -hmm. yeah. looking at Ohana, which is a right. really nice. Right. Ohana? O H A N A H. You know, the South Side guys are a lot on that. It's a great, great extension. It's gorgeous. You can do some insane customization with that. Um, even the demo site is just uh, actually, uh, it's a weird address. It's app.ohana.com. Um, but it's a, it's, a, it's a beautiful and customizable app that handles all sorts of registration. It's mobile, too. Yeah. So upcoming events, you know, featured events, the actual calendars. Costs, places left, so you can do an immense amount of customization with it. That's very, very slick. Uh, so you have know, the registration for it. In this case, it's free, so you can just register, blah, 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 and you're done. Have you used it for our client? Yes, we're actually, we actually use it on our site, we use 1.0 just for just event management. We don't actually, so you can it. Um, Does that Ohana have like a countdown, like little uh, clock for like? Say you're having a sale, like four days left to the sale. It's just events, so it's not all about. We haven't looked at any clocks. It's just sort of just okay. there's a calendar like, entry. So we just use the 1.0 version just to list events that we're attending. Uh, Do you know of any uh, components or modules or anything that would have like uh, e-commerce type of event uh, with like a countdown, you know, for a sale? There are there are simple ah. plugins just for. Uh, yeah, I, I got the plugins for the countdown, and I, I kind of played around with it, um, but not quite what I wanted. I wanted more customized. Yeah, it sounds like customized thing, right? Because it's very unique. But it's it's, it's a, yeah, a pretty How about uh, like any uh, capabilities for automated uh, email marketing or email autoresponders integrated with e shopping carts? Somebody either you know, purchases a product and then 15 days later they get the thank you email, or 60 days later the query. I have not seen any of the Joomla cards that have Joomla cards, no. Nobody's time based of of responders. You have the yeah. immediate responders like thank you, right? You're sure you're see, but nothing time based for you. Know, Usually would, you push it, push it over to com Comcast or, or whatever. Right, it's a yeah, campaign oh, monitor. Or, uh, what's the monkey one? Uh, Mailchimp. 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 Yeah. 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 And I would say. <laughs> Mailchimp, the constant wait, contact. Wait for the monkey survey. Wait uh, for the monkey. Campaign it's, monitor. Kago, Kago, that's one of the things they're supposed to have is the Mailchimp <laughs> integration. Exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, that was going to be released last year, right? Yeah. It was supposed to then be released this year. What integrated with Mailchimp? Kago? Kago. K-H-E-O by Core PHP. Oh. Um, they've been working on that. That's their custom uh, shop and curtain. No, very beta. Call it alpha. Can I forget any? Yes. Oh, red shot. Oh, red shot. Yes. Hold that down. And there's a, even a couple more in the extensions directory. It seems they're pretty new. All stuff. You already hear. He loves Joomla. He's got the best extensions. Ra ra ra. We talked through it. We beat it to death today. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you.